can get several types of questions on IELTS Writing Task 1 that can require you to describe a line graph, table, bar chart, pie chart, diagram, and so on. However, the technique for writing an introduction is similar for all those tasks. We'll take a look at the Band 9 method to write a Task 1 introduction and go through several examples of writing introductions for several different tasks. I will show you how to use information from your question card for your writing. So here is a general technique to write a great introduction. First, write what your graph shows. After that, indicate a time period. And finally, list countries or other names that appear in your question card. Remember to keep your introduction short. One or two sentences is enough. It doesn't matter whether you're describing a graph or a diagram, this technique works for all IELTS writing task 1 questions. And I can say that writing a good introduction is very important, because it starts the whole essay and gives an examiner the first impression about your writing skills. So we will make sure that you excel in it. Let's look at our first example. We can see that the title of this question is describing bar charts. And the very first thing you need to do when writing an introduction is to read your question card. The question card is a short text that goes together with your graph and explains it in more detail. You will always get a question card for any IELTS writing task. So let's read our question card. The graphs below give information about computer ownership as a percentage of the population between 2002 and 2010 and by the level of education for the years 2002 and 2010. All right, remember our ideal introduction formula. Write what your graph shows and for what period of time. In this case, the graph shows two pieces of information. A. Information about computer ownership as a percentage of the population. And B. Information about computer ownership by level of education. And the time period is years 2002 and 2010. So, here's how I rewrote the introduction. The bar charts show data about computer ownership with a further classification by level of education from 2002 to 2010. Take a look at the general structure of my introduction. So, first of all, I gave the type of the graph. In this case, it was bar chart. Afterwards, I explained what my bar charts show. In this case, the bar charts show data about computer ownership. And finally, I also indicated the time period. Look at how I used paraphrasing to avoid repeating the question card. Instead of saying, the graphs below give information about, I wrote, the bar charts show data about. And to mention the second piece of information, level of education, I wrote, with a further classification by level of education. Finally, when indicating a time period, instead of the original expressions, between 2002 and 2010, and for the years 2002 and 2010, I simply wrote from 2002 to 2010. 
You can see that paraphrasing is very important for a good introduction. And before we jump to the next example, I want to equip you with more paraphrasing vocabulary. First of all, let's look at the introductory expressions. Those expressions are the first words of your introduction. Here are some examples of the introductory expressions. The graph, chart, table or diagram gives information about, provides information about, shows, illustrates, represents, depicts, gives reason why, only if graph provides reason for something, explains why, only if your graph provides explanation for something, compares, only if several items are compared. But pay attention to the word compare. You can say, compare something in terms of something. For example, the charts compare two cities in terms of the number of employed people. Or you can say, compare something in year one and year two. For example, the graph compares the population in 2000 and 2013. Now let's look at more paraphrasing techniques. You can rewrite a phrase by using the word how. For example, show the number of people is equal to shows how many people or depicts changes in spending on is equivalent to depicts how much change spending on. Also, you can rewrite a phrase by using synonyms. For example, you can replace the following phrases. Number of is equal to quantity of. Spending can be replaced with expenditure. Rate with percentage, ratio, with proportion, information, with data. Change can be sometimes replaced by increase, decrease or variation. Share is equal to portion and place is equal to site. These phrases often come up in IELTS Writing Task 1, so this list of synonyms should be very useful. It's good to remember those words. Alright, now let's look at how we can apply paraphrasing to time periods. Look at these three common ways to list a time period and their paraphrases. From 2010 to 2020, between 2010 and 2020, in 2010, in the year 2010, in 2010 and 2020, in 2010 and 2020 respectively, in the years 2010 and 2020. Ok, well done! Now you know all the tricks to start a band night essay for IELTS Writing Task 1. To make sure that we remember all those techniques, let's go through one more example. Here is a second example of IELTS Writing Task 1 question. In this task, you need to describe by charts. Let's try to write an introduction for this task. As usual, we'll start by reading the question card. The two pie charts below show the online shopping sales for retail sectors in Canada in 2007 and 2009. 
And here's how I wrote my introduction. The two pie charts compare the percentages of online shopping sales in Canada for different retail sectors electronics, food and beverages, home furnishings, and video games in the years 2007 and 2009. All right, let's examine the introduction that I wrote. Firstly, does it correspond to the band 9 introduction formula? Well, yes, it does. From reading this introduction, we can understand what our graph shows. In this case, percentages of online shopping sales. And for what period of time? Years 2007 and 2009. Okay, that's good. Now, let's take a look at how I used synonyms here. In the original question card, we had the word show, which I replaced by the word compare. Then I paraphrased online shopping sales for percentages of online shopping sales. Also, instead of writing for retail sectors, I wrote for different retail sectors. And finally, I changed the expression in 2007 and 2009 to in the years 2007 and 2009. Also, take a look at how I used additional information from my graphs to write a more detailed introduction. As you can see, we are given the names of retail sectors in our pie charts. Electronics, food and beverages, home furnishings, and video games. So I just put all those names into parentheses and plugged them into my introduction, right after I mention retail sectors. So don't forget to look attentively at your graph and use all the names that appear on it in your introduction.